Welcome to an episode of uh, Amplify, and with me in the car <laughs> is none other than Pat Barrett. And who's driving? Well, who's driving? Daryl. Daryl's driving. Daryl <laughs> is taking one for the team. Yeah, Daryl is right now. Yeah. <laughs> Be safe, Daryl. Be safe. <laughs> Pat Barrett, nice to have you in the car. Is this your first time having a car interview? This is, uh, well, I feel like I get interviewed by my kids in the car all the time about, are we there yet? Are we there yet? No, are we yet. there yet? Are we there yet? Is that an interview? Does that count? <laughs> this first time, I, I can't wait to see how this goes because it depends how good Daryl drives. Like, this interview could end very quickly. <laughs> Eliza in so, his hands. So I'm ready, I know, I'm ready. All right. So is this is your first time in Singapore. How do you find Singapore so far? Singapore is is I don't know if it's exactly what I thought it was because I, I didn't even know what to think. And I've heard not I've heard a lot of crazy rich Asians is filled actually in Malaysia. So it's trying to trick us, trying to trick us. Um, but it's the, everyone I've met has just been so generous, and the food is amazing. Chili crab, had that, black pepper crab, chicken rice. What else have I had? Um, I know bubble tea is from Taiwan, but it's still good. It's still good. So we've we've loved it. First time. Not it does not disappoint. Okay, cool. Um, you have been to a few churches leading worship in Singapore. So how's your experience in leading worship in Singapore? What was it like? People from Singapore sing so loud and are just passionate and it's really inspiring. You know, I, I think I went into this trip really excited to just see what God was doing here and experience for myself. Like I, when I go into times of worship, I don't just think like, oh, I'm here to just share songs and, you know, share my own experience or my own voice. I want to worship. I need the, those worship times for myself as much as anyone else does. So being able to just worship with um, brothers and sisters on the other side of the world and and together us have an opportunity to be in the presence of God, it's just been an incredible experience. I'm really grateful for it. Awesome. And uh, what is your heart for worship? Why is worship so important to you? Why is worship so important? Well, whether we like it or not, we all worship something. We all esteem something. Whether you're in the church or you're not in the church, we can worship. You see it all through the scriptures. You, something in your life is in the number one spot, no matter if it's God or if it's something else. And I. I know from experience when God is not at the center and something else is at the center, we cause a lot of harm to ourselves, to you know, our emotional health. So that's just from the experiential side, from the scripture side, we just know that there, there's only one thing in our lives that's, that's really worthy of that type of adoration and honor and esteem and it's not money and it's not popularity and it's not our profession all those things are are good and fine but when they're out of order and when they're too high we lose the opportunity to live the life that was promised by God and to experience Jesus called it eternal life. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, you know, all your soul, all your might. And what happens when we do that is we step into alignment with, with what we were actually born to do. And I think that's good news. So that's what I would say. <laughs> Fall in his knees, 
how important is uh, local worship to you? Oh, how important is that? I mean, that's what I've been doing my whole life. Local worship is... I've been a part of my church back home for 10 years, going on 10 years, and for the first nine years of that, I was the worship pastor there, and now I'm just a volunteer at the same church, but I... Even the songs that I'll be that I travel around singing, those were like local songs when, for me, those are my local songs. Those are songs that we sang in our house church, in our community. Those are songs that happened just in very close proximity to where I live. So I think it's so important because there's a unique thing God is doing something amazing all over the world. Of course He is. But in each place, because there's a unique culture and a specific group of people with specific needs and specific um, you know, a specific even bend to their personality, the expression of God is just a little bit different. And in Scripture, just the picture that we're given is one body, many parts. And as we all encounter God locally and live out the expression and the life of heaven locally, there are times just different aspects of God we get to see and we learn from each other and we get a fuller picture of what the kingdom is like. So I'm so passionate about that because when I come to Singapore and I get a chance to worship with the community here, I get to take back to Atlanta, you know, a, a, a new perspective. Or not, you not it's, it may not be new for you here, but there's a different perspective than what we have, and we get the opportunity to share and and benefit from one another. From one another. So, um, and I think the local expression also gives you a chance for community in a deep way. That's just not. It's just not there if you're just, you know, behind a computer going to church all the time and you don't get a chance to actually interact with real people in that sense. For the songs that you've written, is there a constant message in it? Constant message. I think, well, when I think about, it's a great question. When I think about the songs that I've written, it's, I think the constant message for me has just been my life with God. And some of the, some songs have come out of questions in my own life and circumstances in my own life and, you know, years and moments where I was walking through a very specific thing and, and I needed this, a song to help me be honest about what's in my heart, but also a song to take all those present experiences and, and direct them towards worship. So I guess, yeah, I guess that'd be the constant theme would be my life, but I know that looks very different with different songs. Sometimes it's about identity. Sometimes it's about trust. Sometimes it's about, um, you know, asking God to help me in the waiting when what my life looks like isn't what I thought it would be or when I haven't experienced that promise yet. So my life, maybe the constant theme is actually just um, faith in different aspects too. So yeah, I'd be curious to know. I think there are certain years where a lot of songs have a very similar theme. You know, I feel like right now I'm writing a lot of songs about faith and believing for what's next and I've noticed that. Uh, Last question. Do you have anything to say to our listeners in Singapore, or especially the songwriters here in Singapore? Yes. Yes, I I would just encourage, I would encourage you if you're a writer, or even if you don't think you're a writer, (laughs) you've been playing music and you journal a lot, and you have, you know, things about, things that you've learned along the way in your journey with God and through the scriptures that you're passionate about sharing, I would say share it. Um, 
there's something really beautiful to me when, that happens when people sit down and create and have the courage to take some of those things that are inside and and some of those, you know, maybe they're verses and or phrases that God has given you that have helped you trust Him more that could really help other people. So maybe what God is giving you isn't just for you to keep. And that was some advice that my dad gave me when I was 16 years old, when I was writing a song. He came in my room and said, and I, he said, what are you working on? And I said, um, oh, it's nothing. And I was really hesitant and embarrassed to show him what I was working on. And he said, um, he said, Patrick, the songs that God is giving you are not just for you. They have a chance to help other people. So that's what I would just say. Like, what if the songs that God has given you could help set someone else free the same way they've set you free? And what if there are people in your community that could really benefit from the thing that God has done in you? And maybe those songs could have a life outside of that and bless people outside your community. Maybe that, but regardless of that, um, if that were to happen, the courage to share and give voice to the good things that God has done for you is um, it's a very liberating thing for the world and for your own community. So I've experienced that firsthand. I would just encourage you to do that. Thank you for your time. And we have arrived safely. We made it. Thank we you, Daryl, for keeping us I know, safe. That could have gone a lot of ways, a lot of different ways that could have gone just that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat, for awesome. your time.